Okay, I think we're live uh, from Newcastle. Thanks to those of you uh, who are up joining us after uh, a stellar night of action here in the city. Um, not the ending many of uh, the local fans would have wanted, not the ending that Lewis Ritson would have wanted. Um, we start our, our post-fight show off with, with Campbell Hand. Good to see you, mate. Um, that was a pretty wild ending to, to an amazing fight, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good fight. It was, um, nah, he was a machine, Ponce, were he? Was. he? Just didn't, he was relentless, didn't stop. So, uh, and we know Ritz and he don't really take a backward step either, so it was always going to be a good fight, and, and it was. Were you expecting Ritson to be pushed back as easily as he was tonight? I think that was a shock to a lot of people, wasn't it? Yeah, there's one thing about Ritson is he's always been, like, so strong mm. and, like, the aggressor, and to see, I think early on, he, he just that uh, he could push him back and was making it an hard night for him. So yeah, it was surprising. And we were in a, a back room uh, backstage. Can you just give me an idea what the atmosphere was like in there tonight? Only a thousand fans. Did it sound like a few more to you? Yeah, definitely. They love it, don't they? The Jardies. They um, <laughs> like they always get. Like, they've always backed Ritson. He's always had a good following, and it's just good to see crowds back in and everyone's desperate, aren't they, to like, for like big nights again and. It was definitely it was definitely a top atmosphere. What did you make of of the finish? So uh, Lewis's dad, it looked like threw the towel in. Steve Gray had a, had a look at Lewis. I think there was a, a very brief exchange of words between Lewis and his dad. Steve Gray threw the towel out. They they carried on. Of course, he was hurt again twice to the body before it was stopped. What, what could you see from from where you were? It looked like it was the right time. Really, I think the corner were right in throwing the towel in and I think, don't think anyone knows the fighter better than the coach so like no one like the fighter isn't gonna we've seen it with Billy Joe over the past few weeks it, someone does need to make the decision for the fighter and um, Richardson's shown that he was willing to try and like grit, grit his teeth and get through it but I think the trainer knows the fighter better than anyone else and if the trainer thinks it might enough's enough it probably is isn't it yeah, of course it is. It's going to surely rage that debate uh, across social media. No doubt you're all uh, engaging in that at the moment on Twitter. I'll, I'll be checking mine shortly after this. Um, I just want to ask you, we, we saw the leaked uh, fight camp memo and that train picture of Eddie Hearns. Your name, I think, has appeared um, on the list here. Yeah, it looks like uh, fight camp week one. We are going to hear uh, the full schedule on Monday. Have you been contacted and, and is that, as far as you know, in your plans or is that news to you? I'm saying, I'm saying now, me dropping the edit there. <laughs> good lad. <laughs> I'm saying now, play it safe. Okay, good lad. Well, listen, we, we hope to see you back at some point uh, in the summer anyway. You've had a good start to your professional career, 2-0. Nice uh, Campbell Hatton, mate, thanks for your time. Thank you. And hopefully, we'll see you uh, maybe next week. Keep yeah, them crossed. Maybe. All right. Um, I think I'm going to bring in Dave Colwell, who's uh, just standing by here. Um, I'll swap one out for, for another. Dave, come on in, mate. I didn't know you were here tonight, pal. <laughs> Night off, come as a fan. How are you? There's the first show with fans back. Yeah. So I wanted, to, and it's Newcastle fans. So I um, imagine you purchased a ticket up. through the through the website and not through any contacts. And no, I asked Matcho. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So talk me through what you saw in that sort of whirlwind last minute of the tenth round. Oh wow, <laughs> mate. The <laughs> The problem is, the referee's always in a difficult position, usually, whether they, they, they stop the fight too early, stop the fight too late, they always get slagged off. It's very, very hard to get to get the perfect timing in everybody's eyes, be it a corner, be it fans, be it whatever. The problem is with this one is that you've got the fighter's corner throwing a towel in. That is saying, I want my man pulling out. There's this rule where they say, just wave the towel. Listen, if you're in... in you know, you want that stopping straight away because you're in fear of your man getting hurt, you'll just throw it in anyway and make sure that, you, you know, he's, he's going to see mm. it. So he sees the towel, he decides to ignore it, which is within his right, but then I can, I was expecting him to, and I thought, well, why is he doing that? But then I thought he's going to stop it any second now. But he lets it carry on. He goes down, he counts, he gets up. I'm right? Yep, correct. And then now then, I thought, well, he's going to stop it now. What are you counting for? But you're going to stop it now. But he doesn't stop it then. I can't get my head around that. He lets that go on. So, so the towel, by the, the, the trainer throwing a towel in, he's saying, that my man's had enough. Seconds later, my man's on the floor. That shows you he's, he's literally at breaking point. He gets up then. What happens then if he gets clean spark out or worse, gets hurt? That's very, very dangerous. 
You know, that's a dangerous call for a referee to make. I just think it's a dangerous call for him to make. And and you're in with somebody that can them that's hurting you that mm. can punch. You know, I just think it was crazy. You know, he had every every help to make that decision to pull the fighter out, and and he didn't. You know, it's, the refs are in a difficult job, but he had a hand there because it's not just a corner that knows his man; it's his father as well. Mm, mm, mm. You know, and the refs are there to protect. You know, the, to protect the fighters. We need we need corners to protect the fighters. We need refs to protect the fighters, and that was only ever going to end one way. Um, I might grab you back in again in a few moments' time, yeah. but just seeing behind the camera, Heron Mears Ponce, the winner. Would you mind if we just yeah, grabbed them and had yeah. a couple of words with him yeah. through Kieran Archer? Like, Dave, thanks very much as always for, for your time. May try and grab Dave in just a moment. We have got the winner, of course. We were hoping to be speaking to Lewis Ritson, but the the victor comes in. Heron Mears, welcome. Um, please uh, grab the mic, Kieran. I think that mic is is live for, for you. So Perfect. if you want to talk into to that as well, do a brilliant job translating for all of our fighters. Hello, uh, firstly, many congratulations uh, on your victory tonight. Was that fight as tough as you were expecting? Uh, primeramente, felicidades por lo que has hecho esta noche. Fue tan duro como lo esperabas. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Sí, la verdad que que fue muy duro. Fue un poquito más de lo que yo esperaba. Era era muy fuerte, Ripson. Así que eh, esperaba una guerra, pero Quizás un poquito menos, menos fuerte que sea él. Yes, thanks very much for, for, um, for wishing me all the best after my fight. Um, yes, it was a very tough fight, and actually it was a bit tougher than I expected. I expected uh, a war with Ritson, and he's a tough fighter, but he's even tougher than I expected. When you hurt him with that body shot in the first round, did you think it was going to be an early night for you? Cuando diste daño en el primer round, ese golpe al cuerpo, pensaba que ya se terminaba ya la pelea. Sí, sí, yo pensaba que que ya se terminaba la pelea, eh, otro boxeador no hubiese aguantado ese golpe, fue un golpe muy justo que yo le di, pero él es muy fuerte como dije antes y, y siguió continuando la pelea. Yes, I didn't think it was over. It was a great shot. I hit him with him. Any other boxer would have gone down. I hit him right on the button, and, and it would have hurt him. But he just showed his toughness that he was able to recover from that. It was a, a strange ending to the tenth round. The towel came in. The referee threw it back out again. Um, Talk me through it from what you remember of, of that last minute or so of the fight. Sí, fue un poco raro, ¿no? El, el, el round número, número 10, porque ya vimos la toa, que entra la toa, ya de usar el se vuelve a tirar. ¿Cómo lo viste desde tu, tu punto de vista? Eh, para mí fue un poco confuso. Pensé que ya se había terminado la pelea cuando tiraron la toalla, pero el referee decidió seguir, seguir con el combate y, y quizás si hubiese parado cuando la toalla cayó en el ring, eh, no se hubiese lastimado la costilla. So yeah, I, it was a bit confusing when we, were, when we were in the ring because I thought the fight was over. As soon as I saw the towel, I thought it was over. And then I saw the ref throw it back out. And to be honest, it was a bit of a shame because he's probably hurt in the rib area now and he wouldn't have been had we stopped the fight when we saw the towel for the first time. Okay. Um, just talk to me about what this means for you. You moved to 28 and 0 as a professional, but more importantly now, you are the IBF mandatory challenger for the undisputed champion, Josh Taylor. Surely the, the biggest night of your career so far. Sí, cuéntanos un poco lo que significa lo que has hecho esta noche, porque 28 victorias sin derrotas y obviamente la posibilidad de pelear por el título indiscutible con Josh Taylor para la IBF. ¿Qué es lo que significa y, cómo, y qué representa ese, ese reto? Es casi un logro, un sueño cumplido. Estoy un pasito más de, de lo que siempre soñé de que arranqué con el boxeo, así que una felicidad inmensa. So it makes me immensely happy. It's, it's one step closer to my dream. It's the dream that you always have as a fighter to go and be a world champion. So I'm one step away from that now. Well, you've broken a, a few British hearts tonight, but um, many congratulations on a, on a fantastic performance tonight. Has roto algunos corazones británicos esta noche, pero muchas felicidades por lo que has conseguido esta noche. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Y disculpa si no fue lo que esperaban, pero muchas gracias. Thank you very much. I'm sorry if it was. It didn't turn out as you expected, but thanks very much for your support. Gracias. Thank you, Kieran. Thank gracias. you, your star. Really appreciate that. I'm going to sub Dave back in. What a note for uh, Jeremias Ponce becomes that IBF super lightweight mandatory challenger for Josh Taylor. We know Jack Catterall has been promised his shot. WBO mandatory has been waiting about two and a half years for that. Maybe that will be uh, the Scottish homecoming, but oh, Josh Taylor may have to... And, um, you know, these guys are going to have to get in line now, aren't they? Uh, and where does Lewis Ritson go from here, first of all? It's not easy for him now, Dave. It's not easy. It's, listen, it's never easy. And it's always everybody's call to start questioning the future in a sport when a fighter suffers a defeat. Mm. Um, he's not lost to a bad fighter. And also what we have to remember is not everybody is, is world champion material. You know, thousands of people turn professional. How many people make it to the very, very top? So... 
a lot of, and if we go back to my time in boxing, I remember the, the British title, the European title, were fantastic title to aim for. If you if you won one of those belts, that was a great achievement. Yeah. It's kind of like got overshadowed now because a bit devalued, haven't they? Almost. Yeah, because way. we've had so much success with having so many world champions. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. back back then it was you know it was rare to get a British British fighter winning world titles. Um, not you know at, at the same time having so many, and so we've kind of like lost that. But I would like more focus put on British titles, focus put on European titles, because they're fantastic titles, like I've said. And, and for somebody like Lewis Ritson, so maybe he's, he isn't world level. But let's shoot for European level. We've, you know, we've seen that he's, he's, he's conquered domestic level, but get all that European title, you know, establish yourself as a, as a European champion. Plenty of good fighters, is there? Look at Bomber Graham. You know, mm. Errol Graham, he was a great European champion. Mm. He never quite well, made it to become there, yeah. world champion, but does that diminish how good a fighter he was? No. Okay. No, and there's been plenty of fighters like that. So for Lewis Ritson, maybe if he wants, it, it all depends on desire and, and, and also, also pride. You know, maybe he, you know, after talk about world titles and things like that, maybe he feels as though he doesn't want to, to go back down a level. It's entirely down to him. So, you know, we have to see what he, he decides with that. But. I think that's how we should go. Just going back to this debate about the, the, the 10th round there and the how coming in and whose decision and whose responsibility um, it, it lays with to, to pull a fighter out. I just wonder whether he was taking damage to the head, whether there would be less qualms with, with what happened because he was taking damage to the body and his head looked ultimately clear. Because in between the rounds, and obviously you would have had a slightly less good view than we had at the commentary desk he looked fresh he wasn't yeah. breathing heavily no. he never looked in any real discomfort but but clearly was getting touched to the body a little bit there how many rounds did he win in the fight well pro probably one probably the probably right, so the, one of the early rounds going into the 10th round when at any stage in the fight did he look like he possessed the power that he was going to clean ponce out no so that i understand if your man has got that power where every time he touches him, even though he's losing the fight but every time he catches him he, he gets a, a reaction i understand where you're there you think mm, yeah but that is the corner that's actually making the decision of ending the fight so the problem that i have there is that the corner who are looking into his eyes after every round are having this conversation after each round they know the man they know whether his mentality is there whether whether he feels that we can still win the fight anything but also their job is to protect him. Now, uh, as trainers, we get a lot of stick if we don't pull a fighter out when he's taking punishment. You know, mm. they've made a decision. That's all he's got left. Throw the, you know, throw the towel in. But I can't. I can have it if you, if you don't, you know, you disagree. And yes, it's the body shots or whatever. But he's then gone down, got back up after the towel's been thrown in. Mm. That just confirms that the corner are right in saying my man's had enough. He's about to get hurt. That's what they're saying. He's about to get hurt. Throw the towel in before he gets hurt. It's a very tricky job for a trainer to time that right. You know, if you hold that towel that bit long and then he gets he gets dropped, you get criticised, you get slated. It's that it's that timing. And they chose just before he went down there to throw the towel in. He's let it carry on. Now it's all right saying you're getting hurt to the body, but if you get hurt to the body, where do you position your arms? Well, across your body. To protect your body. What does that leave exposed? Your head. And you're in with a guy that can punch. Mm. If he then cleans him out, a bad knockout, or worse, what have we got? You know? Yeah, there's going to be a lot of criticism. We've had, we've criticism had a great asked, fight yeah. that, that ends in, in horrible circumstances. Mm. So that it's a difficult job for referees. I understand that. But he was helped by the corner there, saying, pull my man out. So for me, that's that's an alarm bell. And, and for me, that is a is a is is an error of judgment. Okay. Massive. Dave. Always a pleasure to see you, mate. Thank you very much, are you mate. driving home straight after? Yes. Okay, mate. Safe journey back. Thanks, Catch up with you in the week. Uh, I'm going to bring in Eddie Hearn. Mate. Hi, mate. How you doing? Good, Jim. There he is. I was just catching up on my with Paul. <laughs> That's where you were. How you doing? Yes, yeah, good, mate. Uh, you? Firstly, happy birthday for this week. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, pretty well win night again. Yeah, it was a good fight, wasn't it? I mean, he, he, you know, Ritson tried and tried. Wasn't particularly in the fight that much. No. Um, got really badly hurt to the body in the first round. I, sp I spoke to him in the change room just now basically kind of said I didn't recover from that and you could see I just heard you saying to Dave exactly the same thing he was protecting his body all night mm. but he actually said he never hurt me to the head once he we said I felt like yeah, head, he, said, he said I felt like I could take those all night um, just the most bizarre of endings mm. you know you ever seen anything like that before no I mean I think it was one fight was it Katsidis Mitchell where Mickey Van through the through oh Graham Earl yeah Katsidis Earl that's Mel, it through yeah. through but you know the referee has the right to decide whether he accepts the towel coming in. Mm. 
I've never really known anyone not accept it. And mm. you, uh, f for me, you shouldn't be able to choose whether you accept it or not. If it's coming from the corner, especially if it's coming from your own father, yes, you have to stop the fight. Like you can't, you can't make a man fight on. Like it, it, it's it's unethical. So, but really, I thought that he just didn't see the towel. But he did because he threw it out, out of the ring. ring. I mean, one thing I will say about, um, you know, what Adam Booth said is really the corner team should have then been on the apron. You know, right, you, okay. you've thrown the towel in. The referee hasn't accepted it. You need to, you need to, you know, you need to, but you shouldn't have to. Once that towel goes in, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like he was in the fight really at that point. Yeah. So it was just, it was just strange. And I think uh, actually big exclusive because Scott wanted me to mention it. Scott's got the footage of Steve Gray going into Lewis Ritson and explaining the stoppage, which will be dropping on Matchroom shortly. Scott, look at him. Look, he's hammering look. away. Actually, you actually got actually over. semi 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 boner uh, from uh, <laughs> from our digital team there. Yeah, um, <laughs> and yeah, just just really strange, really strange. I've not really seen that before. Normally, a towel comes in, and you just accept that the the, the corner have decided. I think actually a couple of rounds before that. Um, he was on the verge of pulling pulling Ritson out of the fight because there was no way back. And, you know, people talk about the interesting thing I got asked um, just now by one of the media is, why aren't we seeing that same power from Lewis Ritson that we were seeing demolish just everyone? Five pounds up, yeah. yeah, but so, and, and the, I think it's twofold. Number one is that was at domestic level. Mm. And number two is that was at 135 yep. pounds. Since he's moved to 140 pounds, we haven't seen him carry that same kind of power. So he was hitting Ponce flush tonight with, mm. with plenty. And, you know, you, you expected him to get tired because after three rounds, I was thinking this is a, a tremendous pace. He didn't get tired. Ritson took too much punishment and himself had nothing in the tank to, to push Ponce back anyway and, and a deserved winner. Um, so I know, you know, with the track record of, of you know, some of the fighters this year and Josh Warrington is, of course, ringside, yeah. you put some rematch clauses in. Do you have anything there? And Is it even worth a rerun? No, not on this one. I mean, it's a final eliminator for, for the, uh, the world title. You know, you go in with your man and you hope he wins. And if not, you shake the other fella's hand and say, congratulations, yeah. you, you move on. Um, it doesn't really warrant a rematch. You know, it's two guys. Ponce was 24-0, and 0, IBO champion. So, you know, in, in many ways had better credentials than Ritson. Mm. And, you know, Lewis has got to, to brush himself down and come back. I mean, he's failed to take that step to world level. You know, I mean, he did it in a way against Miguel Vasquez, but it was really an appalling style for him. Tonight was actually not a bad style for him, but he wasn't good enough. So you have to decide now, you know, you've, you've gone through domestic level. What do you do? Do you, do you step back? Do you rebuild? Do you take a big domestic fight? I mean, someone just tweeted about a fight with James Tennyson. I mean, that's a tremendous ding-dong between those two. I actually like the fight with Luke Campbell as well because I think you're going to see Luke Campbell come back at 140. But for Ritson now, it's, you know, you don't really want to drop to... Um, those guys aren't, you know, I think they're above domestic level anyway, particularly Luke Campbell. So, you know, it's going to be interesting for him coming back. Or he might turn around and go, you know what? I've won the Lonsdale belt. I've had some cracking nights in Newcastle. Haven't quite reached that level, but he's still a he's still a young man. But has to, you know. he has to assess his future quite seriously. I mean, there were parallels between Ted Cheeseman losing to Sergio Garcia at around the same time as Ritson lost to Patera in the way they were progressing, and then suddenly halted in their tracks. We've seen Ted Cheeseman make some key adjustments and really come on as a fighter. We haven't necessarily seen the same thing in Ritson. He admitted himself he felt he was a little bit lucky to get the decision over Vasquez. He's lost tonight. You could see that as almost two defeats on the spin. Is it maybe time for him to, to try a new training setup? Maybe. I mean, I think he, you know, he, he changed Neil Fannin in with his dad. Yep. But, you know, a lot of it is not like for like, but obviously it's been around for, for some time. You know, he didn't move his head enough tonight. No. I don't think he used his jab as well as he normally no, does. He's yeah. got a fantastic jab and you hardly saw it tonight, you know. Because um, we've been pushed back so much. Yeah. Why. Um, you know, training team set up, you know, or, or maybe just you, you reach that level and, you know, you, you have to stay at that level, lose at that level to improve. You're right about Ted Cheeseman, but again, he you know he, he lost to Sergio Garcia. We know his world was turned upside down at that stage. He's come back with some great wins. But at domestic Yes, level. so now Ted's got to take that next leap and see if he's learned from mm. those experiences and, and those mistakes. And Lewis Ritson, again, you know, you have to come back and see if you've learned from those mistakes. But, you know, it's always difficult to take defeat. And, you know, he, uh, he gave it everything, though. You know, I mean, he, he took a lot of hammer tonight. He really did. And, you know, even when the stoppage came in, even when the towel came in, he was still throwing, he was still trading. But he, you know, it was one, one too many in the guts.
Um, I know we had a few hundred back for, for Joshua Pule, but was that uh, the best atmosphere we yeah, had? It was great, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, when do you think? I can't remember the days when we used to have 9,000 across yeah. the road in the utility arena. Yeah. I mean, that felt like 9,000 tonight, but yeah. great. You know, Josh Warrington sitting next to me. You know, we're talking about going back to Headingley to rematch Maurizio Lara. We've got a massive announcement coming soon on that card. And he's just like, oh. And I, when we think back to... Warrington against Lara, you know, mm. in front of nobody. Mm. And even Ritson against Vasquez in front of no one. What a weird moment in our life and a weird moment for the sport that these guys have to go into the ring and have a fight with someone in that kind of environment. I mean, they deserve a lot of credit. You know, we all do for, for managing to keep the sport going, but particularly the fighters going in in that kind of environment. Mm. And it's cost a lot of fighters. You know, it cost Josh Warrington. Who knows if he would have beat Lara that night in the Leeds Arena, but you can bet your life he would have had a much better chance. Yeah, even Francesco Patera was very, very flat in Italy a few yeah. weeks ago as well um, uh, against an opponent he would have walked through um, probably probably 18 months before. It's affected a lot of fighters. Um, one thing lots of people have been asking me to ask you about is obviously this. Yeah. Um, so we got an announcement on Monday, um, although that is... It's half, an half an announcement. Half an announcement, half of it's blurred I will out. say that some of it... Um, some of it is not happening like there's a few bits that are not happening you know what josh warrington said to me tonight he goes hey i've been thinking all week you know on kid galahad against jazza dickens why was my name next to it i didn't even realize and that's because i want him to do the commentary oh, that, that was right. all it was yeah. and he was like it's been on my mind all week i went no mate i just want you to do the commentary all oh, right okay really? i didn't know what you were thinking so a lot of people have been saying to me that was clever what you did with a notepad like the way you position, like you, you yeah, put yeah, that, yeah. like that's got everyone talking. Yeah. And I was like, because they went, I mean, who who uses a notepad? I'm like, I me. <laughs> and every day I write down every card, every fight I'm thinking about, every fight fighter that we're working with, the plans for those fighters, because it just it it just sinks in there. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I I, I do have a laptop. That's but good. Yeah, thank you, thank you. But I like writing things down, and it helps me. That's why when I do a press conference. I don't need notes yeah. because I've, I've written it down a million times. Okay. But I um, can't remember the bloke's name, Tony, or whatever it was from Great Northeastern Trains. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you for that, mate. Cheers, um, mate. Good bit of I mean, you would have thought, really, oh, look, you can see the writing on the, his pad, so mm. I'll just crop that out mm. before I post mm. it to mm. the world. But no. No. Well, no. you know, he's not in the game, so. Yeah, and, um, and also his bacon sandwiches weren't great either. Oh, brilliant. So it was a double kick in the nuts. Cheers, Tony. Yeah. Um, what's the response been generally from, from the fights that were made, whether they happened or not? What, was it was good, good feedback? Really good, yeah. And as, as I said, there are, I think, one or two fights on there that aren't happening or, or have been changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, you know, we got a big announcement on Monday, so I won't say too much, but, you know, people are, are very excited about the cards. Um, it's one of those, you know, we know with Fight Camp, the sort of the mantra from the first season was no easy fights. And it's difficult because some people, were, uh, you know, I mean, Sandy Ryan is turning pro on that card. Mm. You know, you John, can't stick her in a room. No, hard, exactly. Right, yeah. Johnny Fisher. I mean, there are a lot of people, Fisher, Marku, you know, these people who are actually stepping up and saying, mm. and, and the no easy fights mantra is a great excuse to be able to say to trainers and managers, sorry, mate, fight camp, no easy no fights. Easy this fights. is how we do. You know, Dave's over there. I think Hopi Price is going to be on, on that card as well, although he's ready for a step up. But, oh, yeah. you know, it's, um, it's exciting. It's really exciting. We're going to have fans there this time. The, uh, the announcement on Monday is going to be wild. The cards are great. You know, fantastic fight that's, you know, is there. But obviously your man, Joshua Boatsy, big step up for him and the right kind of fight as well. Absolutely. Great to have a big domestic world title fight there as well. And, uh, you know, Conor Ben's on fire right now and a really good fight. But plenty of great fights um, throughout the throughout the card that will be announced in their entirety on Monday. Cool. Anything else you wanted to talk through on, on this card? I mean, obviously the, the main event has really been uh, the one that sort of grabbed the yeah, attention. Yeah, I thought, I thought, listen, Thomas Patrick Ward is a, is a great technician. I think the problem he's going to have is... You know, he's like a, a Demetrius Andre who or who a was a Billy Joe Saunders yeah. at you know maybe a year or so back, where the so. champions look at them and say, "Why do I want to fight Thomas Patrick Ward?" You know, the, is there a bundle of money in it for me? Yeah. No. no, right? He's a he's a trickster. He's you know he spins off beautifully. He's you know he's never balanced. He's he's elusive, and you need to get him in the mandatory position mm. because otherwise he's not going to get a shot. But hopefully they can do that. I thought the Savage was great. You know, big big shout out to Damien Chambers who actually in the third round Gave started it just to just sort yeah. of get his feet. And everyone keeps saying, all you've got to do is get through two rounds with a Savage. Yeah, but And we don't know how good the Savage is going to be, but I'm glad that he's talking now about cruiserweight and bridgeweight and heavyweight because let's be honest, he's a cruiserweight. He's 211 pounds comfortably. Yeah. Yeah. So, but therefore... I think the money fights are in the heavyweight division, but he's kind of accepted, okay, well, 
I'll fight anybody. But uh, he's uh, those cruiserweights are, are sort of moving on now. Obviously, Coley will, will potentially go north in the next 18 months. Breedis is 35. Daughter Cross is 35 too. Obviously, Usyk's gone. gassiev has gone from, from that division. It's wide open for somebody to step up. But any time the any time there's a division where you know one guy has sort of had reign for a while. Obviously, it was Usyk before yeah. Bradis. But some of the belts become fragmented. You know, I'd like to see a Coley unify before he moves to heavyweight. Yes. But, you know, we've got a really big fight on Fight Camp, which has obviously already been announced, which is Billum Smith against uh, McCarthy. Mm -hmm. Those guys are around three and four, five in the IBF. The winner of that fight is probably going to end up fighting Sislak um, for the vacant title because yep. Bradis will move on. So, you know, Savage is probably looking, you know, Savage is probably thinking to myself, can I beat Billum Smith and Tommy McCarthy? Yeah, I think I, I, think I can. And, you know, you've got Richard Riakpour, you've got plenty of other uh, cruiserweights in the mix. Lawrence Acoli, I think, is going to move quickly there. But... I think, uh, I, I'm just, I don't know how people feel at home, but just bridge away. I do have a problem with putting well, one of our fighters. One, government, one sanctioning body. I know, but I just it? have a problem with putting a fighter in a bridge away. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, it's Because I strange, don't believe in it. It's a strange concept. So I kind of feel it? like, you know, I'm preaching that I don't, I don't agree with Bridgeweight, mm. and then I go and pay some sanction fees and, and stick one of our boys in for the world title. Mm. So, yeah, I probably will do it. Good stuff. Um, he did talk about Nick Webb, and I know Webb was kind of half slated to be on this, mm. this bill and, and something fell through, but Nick Webb has sort of stated his intention that he would like to fight Babbage. And I heard Babbage off camera just before he did his interview with Andy Scott. He went, shall I call Nick Webb out? Yeah. Is that a potential fight? You can yeah, I mean, look, we had, it was a bit unfortunate, really. We had an agreement with Nick Webb to fight on this card and then fight Babbage at fight camp. He was supposed to have an easier fight on this card and it's it was very difficult to find an opponent and the opponent that we had was Sokolowski. And I think he looked at it and said, you know, he beat him before and was yeah. like, look, I'm supposed to be sort of preparing for Babich. This wasn't really the plan. And, and everybody was right in the argument, to be honest with you. But I don't think Nick Webb will go straight into the Babich fight at fight camp if he wants to. It's a million percent there on the terms that were agreed, you know, and it's a great deal for him. And you know, I do think people look at Babich and... I think Tony Bellew is a big fan. You know, he messaged me after about the first, second round and said, I told you about Babich. And, but there's a lot of people who aren't yet believers. Mm. A lot of people who think they can beat him. But he is going through people. And I think the Nick Webb fight's a great fight. Yes. Um, but we shall see. OK, so oh, and Cyrus Patterson's debut. Looked yeah, box really he? good. And I thought great reception as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, too good and levels above the opponent who was, who was temporarily game. Um, Solomon Dakers, you know, good stoppage. I thought he looked a little bit flat. I said to him that... I think he's been training for five or six months now, waiting yeah. for his license to go through, yeah, and now yeah. he's boxed twice in a, in a month. He needs a little rest. He'll be back in Leeds in September. Good wins for April Hunter, and uh, good to see Joe Laws get the win. And um, yeah, on we go. And eleven Olympians qualify for Tokyo. Yeah, I, I saw your I saw your interview, well, your stuff with Darren the other day, going through all of them. Yep. Uh, so pleased for Fraser Clark. So, so pleased so because. You know, he's getting to the stage now where if he didn't make the Olympics, you know, all the work and years he's put in, oh, would, would have been so he cool. would just say, why didn't I just turn pro yeah, eight yeah. years ago? You know, and uh, he's, a, he's a great kid, great fighter. McCormack's, you know, um, Ben Whitaker. you know, there's some tremendous fighters. So and you'll have your eye on those. Yeah, I, you know, I don't, um, I've never been a poacher. You know, I've never been someone that creeps around the gym in Sheffield, sort of sitting in a cafe waiting for fighters to come round or, you know, sending them messages on Instagram. And, you know, they know where we are. I feel like we're the best promotional outfit in the world. These fighters have the opportunities to box in key markets all around the world on great promotional deals. Um, I feel some of the criticism we would have had five or six years ago was, well, they've not brought champions through. We've done it from, you know, we will do it from this GB squad. Uh, from Rio we did it with Lawrence Acoli of course but the London cycle before that with Anthony Joshua and Luke Campbell and Charlie Edwards and Callum Smith um, yeah. Luke Campbell and I didn't win a world title but you know Callum Smith uh, Cal Yafire yep. you know from the same podium squad yeah, yeah. and we know how to do it so and Savannah of course yes and and obviously and Katie Taylor from from uh, our way. Irish team and um, mm. I think that we know how to do it and we'll be looking to do it with the 2020 team coming through and there's going to be a lot of them yeah and and their deals will really depend on the success at the olympics you know anyone that medals has a bigger commercial value moving forward turning pro now if it's gold we've got to really put the hand in the pocket you know so maybe if they could get a silver or a bronze that'd be, nice. be the end of the world save you a bit of a packet yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, cheers mate and uh, look forward to monday yeah it's going to be fun Sun's going to be shining. Got a barbecue on. Okay. Got a barbecue. Oh. Yeah, new era. New era. Bad. You know, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of work to do, of which 
you know, you're going to be a big part of. So thank oh, you. Oh, great stuff. Thanks well, so that's what they told me anyway. Yeah, 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 I am. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I look forward to it. Right, so that's 2 o'clock Monday, across Matchroom Boxing Social Media. We'll be live from Mass Schools, Fight Camp HQ to give you all the news ahead of a big summer of action. Don't know what's right. happening in the corridor, but it sounds pretty bad. Hopefully everyone's all right. <laughs> Thanks to you uh, who have stayed up and joined us. It is now 10 to midnight. Get some sleep. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. 2 o'clock Monday. We'll see you then.